Yeah, well, now I'm flying corporate, actually, so oh, that's I was nice. running out of patience. Hi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us here at Booth C55 in Sun and Fun. We're live to the internet, and I'm very glad to have Patty Wagstaff here. Thank Show you. star at Sun and Fun. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. And? And Tootie. Tootie, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, C55, you can come by live after the show. Patty's got a little time, might sign a few autographs. But uh, the reason I asked her here, you know, she's done so much for aviation, and she's been an uh, aerobatic team member for six years, six times in a row, and three times national champion. Three times, yeah. And the airplane's hanging right next to Amelia Earhart. You know, it, it was in the, um, in the Pioneers of Flight Gallery, and they, they redid the gallery, so they moved it out, and it, now it's hanging upside down in the hallway. Yeah. It's a more visible spot, and yeah. it's set up so it's doing a ribbon cut. Oh, neat. And it's really cool. People, when they go to the museum, they do selfies, so you can see the plane. <laughs> and I, I ask people awesome. to send them to me, and I post them on you know, Twitter and Facebook. Cool. So cool. if you get one, send it to me. But it's coming down. They're re, um, they call it revitalization, but they're remodeling, redoing the whole building, right. outside and inside, and it's going to be amazing. And um, so it's going to come down for a couple of years later on in the summer. Right. So go see it quickly. So Dust it off. Picture. Yeah. <laughs> Because the whole, it's gonna, then it's going to be in a different spot. I think it's going to be hanging vertically. Oh, cool. Yeah. And the, uh, More appropriate for you area. with that real hard, tough flying. Yeah, but I like the, I like the upside down place. <laughs> but, uh, but it's going to be in there. It's always going to be there. Excellent. But yeah. I asked if I could fly it in the meantime when they took it down. Yeah. No way, huh? Yeah. Still has an engine in there? Everything in the Air and Space Museum is, is exact, exactly the way it was when it was flying. If something is even... So, for example, Betty Skelton's plane was hanging in the Posse Center, and it's a little pit you see when you first walk in the doors, and it's right. hanging upside down, sort of coming at you. They had that in their collection for a number of years, but they couldn't find the exact carburetor that matched it when she was flying it. That's them, how detailed they that's are. That's how detailed they are, and they finally were able to find one. Somebody found one for them, whatever, and they put it in the plane, then they hung it up. So, Neat. the plane could be started tomorrow. So. Wow. And you yeah. can do a few snap rolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing, you know, uh, you've been a wonderful supporter of SAFE, and I really appreciate it. And what I said before the show is you've been interviewed a thousand times, and, it, you know, you have those wonderful YouTubes up on, on the channels. But the thing for me that's just amazing is how you went from becoming a pilot to aerobatic team in five years. Right? Yeah. Um, it was just like this. I mean, almost like vertical. Yeah, well, I, I was looking for something to do at the time. I was in my late 20s, and I was really, when I thought about all these different things that I wanted to do with my life, I knew I wanted to do something well, and nothing fit until I started flying, and then um, I knew I wanted to do aerobatics, so when I, when I started, you know, flying aerobatics, I, I realized I could set a goal and I could, something I could accomplish, and I, um, I worked hard. I, I treated it like a job. Um, I was very methodical. I had goals along the way, and I just set my sights on that. I think it's things are a lot easier to accomplish when you set a goal. Yes. And the goals change, right. you know, but I always had a mission. So to me, that's really important. Yes. Instead of just sort of like, you know, even if it's maybe not what you want to do forever, make what you're doing your mission. Right. You know, and accomplish that, and then that'll lead you. Because my goals have changed along yes. the way completely. Sure. But um, I didn't know what was out there. You know? Right. But I think if you if you're methodical about your, your training and, and the work that you do, right. and then at night I'd put it aside, you know, and I wouldn't like get all you know, reboot. Yeah. Yeah, and reboot, and then the next day I'd go out there. And I always also looked at people and said, if they can do it, I can do it. Sure. You know? But I mean, you that just accomplished such amazing things. Because I really set it that set it up that right. way. But your dad was an airline pilot, right? Japan Airlines. And your sister right. flies as an airline captain. She's an airline captain too. Yeah. But Patty looked at that and said, "I don't want to sit in the seat and just drive at altitude. I want to really." It wasn't for me. I thought I thought about it. Yeah. I mean, I you know a lot of my really good friends are airline pilots and I love it and it would would have been a, a smart career for me to go in that direction. <laughs> Easier for sure. In some ways. Yeah. But what I read on your website, which I really love, is you took up this part of aviation because it was a challenge. 
you yeah. know, you really want to yeah. go hard. And I love it. You yeah, know, it right. my And it's apparent when you fly because you fly with such a passion. Thank you. Yeah, it's I mean, so I was a big fan. I, I learned to fly in New Jersey, and Leo Lautenschlager was a yeah. real hero of mine. He was a hero of mine too. Yes, and I met, I saw you at Sussex with Leo before he had his accident. Yeah, I flew there once. Yes, one time. and the French was Connection there. was there, uh -huh. and all you guys were like, yeah. sh you know, sharing tips and. Yeah. But that's the point I wanted to get across is Patty learned to fly, Patty learned to be an aerobatic pilot, Patty worked very, very hard to get to all these places. And a lot of people in aerobatics say it's how much avgas you, you burn. You have yeah, to really and work, practicing work, work. smartly by getting yeah. critiquing and training and all that. But you know, it's never felt like work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is, but it's... Good for you. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're doing what you really love, then it doesn't feel like work. No. And it's apparent that you're having a great time up there. Yeah. Thank so I wanted, I wanted to touch on the women in aviation part because I think I told you I had you sign a poster for my daughter when she was six. Yeah. Way back when you were in the... How old is she now? She's 26. Cool. <laughs> so, awesome. yeah, early on. But for women that fly, you know, there are obstacles. And for you, you had to fly harder and better to, to achieve I the, did when I first started out. I really, I think I had to fly better. And like when I won the Nationals, I had to win it three times. You know, if I won it once, they could have said it was a three. Right. People actually told me that, um, but you know the airplane doesn't know the difference. It's it's that's all sort of manufactured. Um, you know, they like just evaluate the maneuver and, bias and, and that people have. It's totally unreal. It's not real. And women that fly know that. They get the plane. They fly the same as anybody. Right. And um, so you can't let that stuff bother you. You just have to. You. I've always felt that um, I needed to use any kind of doubt because I was a female or, and I still get it. If I taxi in somewhere, like I have a bonanza, if I have a friend in the right seat, especially if it's a guy, they'll always ask me for the fuel. Right. You know, it's just even though I'm default. Right seat, yep. and, and then, you know, then they might see my name in the plane and recognize <laughs> me and they feel, I'm like, Apologize, okay. yeah. But, um, and all the women I know say they do it the same thing. But, right. But you have to realize it's not personal and it's a, it's a way to educate. Well, that's if very gracious wanna, of you. No, I think it's, it's pretty if, rude. If but. you want to take... No, it's, it's not, because they're victims, too. Yeah. People that think that way are victims. So if, if every time somebody treats you differently because you're a woman, then you just have to find a nice way to say, well, you know, we do the same thing. The airplane doesn't make a difference. And just go, just go about your business being a professional, have a sense of humor. And, you know, you can only put up with so much. But, <laughs> but, um, but those kind of mistakes are just... We're all victims of... Yeah, culture. Um, Culture. Culture. Yeah. Anyway, so after all of that, you know, national team, U.S., and now you uh, have a flight school. You're yeah, teaching now we have an aerobatic school, and we teach um, aerobatics and upset training. And you actually teach students. I in, do. I do. Yeah. I don't do. Um, I don't do all of it. I have um, a have team. A fantastic. Yeah, the team. Fantastic chief instructor, and then several other instructors um, that we call on, and um, they're all really accomplished people with military or so, airline backgrounds um, that love to teach right? and um, do much better ground schools than I do. So. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, I know you're into the uh, loss of control and you're doing that specifically for some flight schools, aren't you going down south? Yeah, we're doing upset training for right. to, to help with the loss of control problem. and. Um, so we do aerobatic training and upset training, a little right. bit different. And the people that come to those are different too. Um, they come to those courses are different, uh, different motivations. Sure. And so yeah. it's important to have those separate courses. But um, it's been it's been really rewarding. Yeah. It's really busy and it's really fun. Well, that's great. It's yeah. really taken on St. Augustine, right? Yeah. Our headquarters is St. Augustine, but we're also affiliated with Simcom. Okay. In Orlando, so people can sign up for a one-day, um, two-flight hour upset training course through Simcom. That's great. And then we also, for larger flight departments, we'll go to them. And um, we train in the fall, we went to Michigan, and we train 60 pilots in two weeks. We two 60 airplanes. in two weeks? Yeah. We wow, you really go hard. Yeah, we had two airplanes and three instructors, and um, the grand school. Push and, hard. Yeah, it's great. We're and, making a difference. So okay. Patty Wagstaff, CFI, and yeah. flight school owner. Yeah, I love having a CFI. Excellent. I just wrote some articles for Plane Pilot about being a CFI. Right, I was going to say you write that column in Yeah, there. I wrote two, two parts about CFI. Right, okay, cool. We're going to take a little break, uh, and we'll come back after about 30 seconds here. And uh, we're at Booth C55, live at Summit Fund with Patty Wagstaff. 
Pass your written test and your check ride with Gold Seal, the Internet's number one ground school. Take a free test drive today and see how much fun learning to fly can be at onlinegroundschool.com. Welcome back live at Sun and Fun, booth C55. I'm Dave St. George with SAFE, and uh, Patty Wagstaff has joined and us. And Tootie. Uh, so we have some help here yeah. <laughs> online. Patty was the uh, on the aerobatic team for six years and three times national champion. I don't think I have to you know, enumerate all those things, but she has a flight school in St. Augustine. She's teaching loss of control and uh, has all these other pursuits. Yeah. A little dog, a little parrot. Yeah. <laughs> But she works, uh, you're doing wildlife in Africa, we were just talking. Yeah, we started a program, I've uh, written about it too, but we started a program in 2001 to give um, recurrency and aerobatic training to the pilots for Kenya Wildlife Service. And uh, it's gone really well. We've been over there about eight, nine times since then, hoping to go over this winter. And um, it's really the only recurrency training they get. We had a decathlon over there, it got wrecked, so we don't have it now. But We'd love to get another one. And, um, to give them better skills. Yeah, you know, more serious upset training and more better training. Their it safety. really, really helped. You know, with such a small group of 10, 11, 12 pilots, um, you could really see the improvement in safety. So it's really, really So you're over there for a couple of weeks at a time? A couple of weeks, yeah. And, and even getting fly. a plane over there is almost impossible, isn't it? Pretty hard to um, import? As far as shipping one? Yeah, to it's get... It's not that hard. Oh, okay. Um, and... Um, so we use their planes, we use um, Husky Super Cubs, 180s at one point. Great. It's been a really rewarding experience, plus I've gotten to fly all over Kenya. Yeah, yeah. no, I th I've seen your article and I think the Kings also wrote an article uh -huh. about that. And you've brought, you started that and you brought everybody over into that Yeah, I brought some different program. people over, brought the Kings over one year and it was great. Yeah. So you're going to be leading a, or you're going to be involved in a roundtable at the NTSB. Yeah, April 24th. It's going April to be a 24th. All yeah. day um, NTSB roundtable on loss of control. Wow. And looking for solutions to the problem. Right. And also looking at um, how can technology help and or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what are things that we can do. So I'm really honored to be part of that. Yes. Well, and you did a few webinars for us, and I really appreciate yeah. that. And we talked about pilot skills. Well, you know, you know um, we've got a number of students from that. Last from that, webinar. great. Yes. So it paid off for you. I know. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was really surprised. I yeah. didn't realize how many people actually. Well, listen the people that matter really focus in. It's they like really today. Do. I'm sure there's a lot of people online too. Great. But you know, that's making a difference in the problem. You know, more people train. The awareness they tell of people, it. Yes. And I think people are. It's a big topic. And you see in all the aviation magazines and newsletters and, and like you're, you know, say <coughs> talking about it, people are, at least are aware that there's a problem they need to train, but it's yeah. the right thing to do yeah. to get it. Well, and the important point, and I think we had a couple of people on saying it's not just enough to achieve that standard, it's really important to go for excellence, it's really important to go for, yeah. you know, the top, and that's why we teach professionals, and perhaps that's why yeah. Patty supports us. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Um, Great. Well, so I think we'll wrap it up. Let you get okay. on with your busy schedule. Thanks for I really me. appreciate you Thank coming you. by. So I'm, people that I'm are honor. yeah, it's an honor. Really. Thank you so much. So people that are live on the channel, we're going to try to stay live through the day on Facebook and on the Gold Seal Live. Uh, Mark Baker's coming by at 1:30. We have um, Richard McSpadden from the Air Safety Institute. We're going to stay busy. We're going to lose Tootie and Patty, though. they got to go off and sign some autographs. So thank you so She's much for coming. She's a great dog, I isn't really she? <laughs> She's you. very calm. All right. Tune in. Stay with us. <laughs>